Hello, I'm Faris, and welcome to my Geek Vlog. Today on Geek Vlog number 4, I'm going to be talking about the Tim Story Fantastic Four films. Before the reboot and the rise of Marvel Studios, there were tons of Marvel films in the 2000s. Some of them good and some of them bad. But when we reach to the mid-2000s, we finally get to see the first attempt of Marvel's first family superheroes, the Fantastic Four. I was excited when this movie was about to be made. After seeing early Marvel movies like X-Men, Spider-Man, Hulk, and Blade, I was ecstatic when Fantastic Four was about to release in 2005. Fantastic Four is one of my favorite Marvel superhero teams besides X-Men and Avengers because they're all about family. That's why they call themselves Marvel's first family of superheroes. Seeing the casting, photo stills, and trailers, I thought this movie was going to be so good. And after watching the film, hmm, this is where I'm going to talk on vlog number 4. There are good and bad parts in this film. I'm going to start talking about the good. First, let's talk about the cast and characters. The casting in the film was great, starting with Yoan Gruffitt. His performance as Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic, is a great highlight in the movie. He does capture the smart and calm elements of Reed Richards. Every time I watch him playing the character, I could really see Yoan as Reed, and he did a damn great job playing the character. Michael Chiklis as Ben Grimm, aka The Thing, was also another good part in this movie. Every time watching him in his Thing form, it's hard to not feel the amount of sympathy for his character. The Thing is the only character in the Fantastic Four to look different than the other three members. And in the end, Ben Grimm embraced his look, and that's what makes The Thing a great character and a hero. Michael Chiklis did a fantastic job playing both the tough Ben Grimm and The Thing. Chris Evans as Johnny Storm, aka Human Torch, he is my favorite part in this film. He's the funny, comic, chucklehead kind of character just like in the comics. As much as I enjoy Chris Evans playing Captain America, I always remember him as Johnny Storm in the first place. And finally, the casting that I'm not really into it but did an adequate job. Jessica Elba as Susan Storm, aka The Invisible Woman. I never understood this character at times. Every time I watch her performance, her interpretation doesn't seem to have any similarities like any other interpretation I read in the comics. And I don't see any strong side of her character. Plus, what is up with her being naked in this movie? It's not funny and it's insulting to the character. I felt like Jessica Elba is too young for the role. If it wasn't for that, I would have cast someone like Charlie Theron for the better. That's my pick. Now let's move on to the villain in this movie, Julian McMahon as Victor Von Doom aka Doctor Doom. Now when I waited for this movie, I was hoping to see an intimidating and badass Doctor Doom from the comics. Julian McMahon is a great actor, he did a fine job portraying the dark side of Victor Von Doom, but the way the character was portrayed was so weak and badly written. I hated the fact that he's written as a billionaire and giving him superpowers. He doesn't need one. Doctor Doom is a badass villain. He's a genius master scientist. He's a sorcerer and a combatant. In the movie, the interpretation of him is so weak, especially in the sequel which I'll get back in a few minutes. But hey, it's not Julian McMahon's fault, he does have a great amount of talent. It's just a bad script he got. Say what you want about Julian McMahon's Doom, he is still much better than that pick shit reboot Doom who's totally a massive joke. Now let's get into the plot. In the beginning of the movie that explains the origins of their powers, and where they examine their powers after saving civilians in the bridge, we're okay. Then the part where Reed built a machine to recreate the storm that gave their powers was kind of weird to me. Why would he need to do something like that? All the things he need to do is accept his gift. Learn to control his power, motivate the rest of the team as well as working together, and be a family. That's what the Fantastic Four is all about. Family and teamwork. It's their trademark in the 60s. The climactic bell is great, but too short. I wish it could have been a little bit more longer. Let's move on to the sequel. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. I was so pumped to see the sequel to the first film. Especially hearing that the Silver Surfer is going to be in it, 
and Doug Jones is going to play the character, plus Lawrence Fishburne is going to voice the character. Even more exciting is that the villain is none other than the planet-eating Galactus. I was so prepared to see the letdown on this epic proportion. Okay, I'll admit it was a letdown to the franchise, but that doesn't stop me here to tell the good and the bad part in this film. Let's start talking about the good first. The cast are back and they still do a good job portraying their characters. For Jessica Alba, a little bit of improvement. Now I'm going to talk about the Silver Surfer in this movie. The way the character was portrayed in this movie was okay. I really do get his motivation. But when I took the time to analyze it, it didn't really show much like how the Silver Surfer rise. It feels like it turns into a cliché. Heck, the film should have been retitled Fantastic Four The Silver Surfer or Fantastic Four Battle of Galactus. That would have been okay. Now let's get into the villain in this movie. Doctor Doom is back and his evil plans is pretty stupid in the first movie. He intends to steal the Silver Surfer's powers and then goes on a rampage instead of taking over the world in a matter of hours. Yes, this is the same thing that happens in the comics and cartoons. He stole the Silver Surfer's powers and takes over the world in a matter of hours. I swear, it's like they keep on writing Doctor Doom so bad in this movie. And not until the bigger villain in this movie, the planet-eating Galactus, who is apparently a cloud. I just have no idea what else I need to say about this villain. The only word that I could describe for this villain is Major Lame. Let's talk about the story in this film. Well, the beginning of the movie where they showed the Silver Surfer doing on Earth was okay. But when we get to the part where the four works with the military and trying to stop the Silver Surfer, they send out the most douchiest general that hates the Fantastic Four. And yes, I was aware that originally they were about to use Nick Fury as the general in this movie, before they changed the name to General Hager due to Marvel Studios buying the rights for Nick Fury. So the part when the Fantastic Four works with the military was kind of underwhelming. It doesn't seem like it served a purpose in the story. The military barely does shit in this movie. If there's any extraterrestrial things that happens on Earth, Reed Richards should be the first to know and report to the military and not the other way around. Now the climactic battle was so bad you only have Johnny using all the other three superpowers and his to fight Doom alone, all the while Ben is just helping to throw Doom into the river. That's just insulting! Come on, when I waited for this movie, I was expecting an epic climactic battle of the Fantastic Four and Silver Surfer fighting against Doom and Galactus on Earth and in space. But no, that didn't happen and we only get this too insulting mono e mono climax. This totally means that the climax in the first Fantastic Four is better written than this ridiculous piece of insult. This is a total letdown to the franchise already. Now that I talk about these two films, are they really that bad? Well, they're not that bad and I don't think they're really good either. But to me, these two films are still worthy adaptations. They do nail the comic book counterpart and captures the family dynamic of the superhero team. Fox Studios did try their best on the first attempt of the franchise. It could have been better if they improved the writing on the climax. It's like Fox Studios didn't care much about this property. Back then I had high hopes on seeing these films amazing climax and it didn't turn out to what I've expected. These two films had a good beginning and middle but then at the climax was kind of get screwed. And like I said, I think Fox Studios didn't really care much about this property. So in the end, I think these films are still worth to watch, whether good or bad. It still had the good things in it they still show the things of what family and teamwork is like. The thing that overshadowed these two films are the badly written villains and the climactic battles. So that concludes my opinion on the Tim Story Fantastic Four films. I still find these two films a worthy adaptation. The casting is great, the story is okay, and of course they're still representing the Fantastic Four in the right way. Say what you want about these two films, they are still worthy of a movie than the 2015 pick shit flop. 
In the end, I'm still defending these two films because they're still representing the Fantastic Four, including the cheesy Corman version. And yet they're far from being a perfect comic book movie. Come on, when is Fox going to have their partnership with Marvel to work on this franchise? If they're not going to do the partnership, then Marvel will buy their rights back. Thank you for watching my geek vlog. Be sure to subscribe to check out more videos like this or my previous geek vlog or other videos like my thoughts on and casting thoughts.